Today I will be taking a walk down Star Street in Bushwick, Brooklyn. In the 1970s and 1980s, the neighbourhood of Bushwick was riddled with drugs and crime. Star Street in particular was known as a prominent outlet for drugs, specifically heroin. The brands of heroin being sold at the time on Star Street had the street names of La Bamba and Dead on Arrival. Perhaps because of the fact that a good number of the dealers were also neighbourhood people, there was always an uneasy calm on Star Street, and different gangs controlled different corners along the street. If you lived here back then, the dealers were not interested in you unless you were reporting their activities to the police. Statistics showed that two-thirds of the people who were selling drugs on the street also lived in the very same neighbourhoods where they were selling. Of course, parents had to battle the fact that their children were playing on the same streets that the drug dealers were working as well. And parents with a teenager or two were probably on very high alert in protecting their children from a lifestyle that was not too far away. The neighbourhood reflected the times as well. Most residents were either poor or working class, where very few people, who were mostly immigrants, went to college after high school. Their options were either working for the man in a laborious, low-paying job or joining the crews selling La Bamba and Dead and Arrival in Bushwick Park or on Star Street. Many of the teenage girls who lived here during these times would become pregnant. Babies making babies. The sentiment along Star Street in the 1980s was quite simple. You mind your business, and we will mind ours. Raising a family on this street, where Bushwick Park serves as a haven for gang life and drug activity, was not always acceptable to the hard-working parents. Many times when drug sales were being brazenly made in front of people's houses along Star Street, the house owners would notify the police. But there was always one drawback. Nobody was going to testify in court at what they had witnessed. Perhaps a carryover from the recently departed Mafia families who once owned these same streets just one generation prior. You see nothing, you hear nothing, and you say nothing. While the general sentiment was that the local residents wanted the drug dealers gone, who in their right mind is going to make a fuss? There are times that you have to accept what things are and make the best of the situation that you have been dealt. This didn't apply to everyone though. In fact there was one resident who not only waged a one-man crusade against the drug dealers, but he also did it the old-fashioned way. Carlos Hernandez took a rather pugilistic approach to dealing with the gangs. He was not above harassing them whenever he saw deals being made, and on many an occasion, the harassment escalated to where Mr. Hernandez would actively engage in physically fighting members of the ring. Carlos Hernandez and his wife Maria had three young children, and the family did not want their children growing up in this environment. While Mrs. Hernandez would take the diplomatic approach of organising block parties and arranging other social gatherings to try and form some community unity, Mr. Hernandez took the fight directly to the streets. As could be expected, Carlos Hernandez had been stabbed shot and retribution was promised on him and his family in the form of shooting during the period of his physical confrontations with the dealers on the street. 
In fact, he was even known to accuse his neighbours of dealing drugs as well. In one such occasion, Mrs. Hernandez accused her neighbour, Raymond Gonzalez, of dealing drugs. And the resulting fight ended up with Carlos Hernandez being stabbed twice and being threatened with a submachine gun. At 4.38am on August the 8th, 1989, in the early hours before the sun rose, Maria Hernandez was preparing for her long commute to her job in New Jersey. A 1987 Red Camaro drove past the Hernandez house and a gunman leaned out of the car window and sprayed the house with bullets. As Carlos Hernandez covered his three-year-old son, Maria Hernandez was struck by a bullet in the temple. Her 15-year-old daughter cradling her mother's head as she pleaded with her to stay alive. Six hours later, Mrs. Hernandez succumbed to her injuries at nearby Wickoff Hospital. Initially, it was believed that her next-door neighbour may have been involved in plotting revenge against the Hernandezes to try and intimidate them from testifying against him in court. But over the years, Mr. Hernandez has made many enemies. A few weeks after the murder, police arrested 26-year-old William Figueroa, also known as Woolly Bundles, and Hector Santiago, aged 24, for the murder of Maria Hernandez. Sixteen months after the shooting, William Figueroa was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. After the murder of Maria Hernandez, the community held a three mile long memorial service in her honour as a community activist. And shortly thereafter, Mayor Ed Koch signed a bill renaming Bushwick Park on Star Street to Maria Hernandez Park. The park that was once owned by P.T. Barnum now honours the community activist who fought against the drug dealers that once frequented the park.
Yeah, it sure is. Sony 4K, is it like a GoPro but better? I think it's better, yeah. yeah. And yes, it is like a GoPro, yeah. Okay. Uh, you have like so, oh. What may I ask? Uh, so, I, the brand Sony 4K, is it a particular model? Yeah, it's called an FDRX 3000. FDRX? F, 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 yeah. F is in like Frank. Frank, exactly, okay. yeah. FDRX 3000. Costs about $400. Oh, that's not that, bad at all. Not bad at all, no. And then this thing here costs like maybe 150. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, it's oh, pretty wow. cool. Oh, wow, okay. And you so, can shoot in 4K with that? Or like, yeah, I'm shooting in 4K right really? now, yeah. That's awesome, okay. Yeah, Thanks. so I, I do all of um, Ridgewood and Bushwick. Oh, yeah? Try and film as many streets as I can, oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, okay. So, keeps me out of trouble, you know? <laughs> hey, anything for us to keep each other out of trouble, right? Exactly. Thank you so much, thank you. All right, you have a good day. Now. All right.